Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to Happy Cooking with Yvonne Douglas. Today we're going to make a delicious traditional German dish. It's called schnitzel. And we're gonna have some spätzle with it. And uh, I am so looking forward to making this dish because I haven't made it in a long time. And my dad was actually from Germany. And so this recipe has been with us for a long, long time. I'm also gonna make some delicious um, Kartoffelsalat, a potato salad with it. And we're gonna make Brussels sprouts and uh, a really delicious mushroom kind of gravy that goes along with it. Uh, some of you might know it as a hunter sauce, but um, it's actually really, really good. So I'm so looking forward to 2022 and Happy New Year! Happy New Year. Welcome back. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a New Year's tablescape. And I'm just gonna be using things that I had around the house. Some I just recently bought, you know, those little uh, hats with the uh, noisemakers that you get maybe at Target or Walmart. I bought one of those. Uh, but we're just gonna kind of decorate this table. This is our breakfast room table. Um, just doing it in the breakfast room. It's just me and Yvonne this year. Um, so we're, he had to work. So, you know, it's gonna be a very uh, informal uh, New Year's. So I'm gonna show you a quick little tablescape that maybe you wanna do at home. And um, of course, since this is airing on New Year's Day, um, you might wanna think about it for next year. Or you can actually use some of the ideas for any time of the year. You know, make it festive. It's 2022. Okay, so so far, basically, I have that uh, deco mesh ribbon going around this. Um, this is actually a silver tray, it's two of them. The reason why I'm using this second one is to give this some height for the hat. And then I'm going to use this uh, tool, and you wanna make sure it's long enough. We're going to kind of wrap that just to soften it up a little bit. So we're going just to go around and see how much I'm gonna need, and maybe just a little bit more and then cut that tool, this is just white tool, and I'm going to wrap that around, just to soften it up some. See, it already makes it so much softer. It's not so bold and in your face. <laughs> but look how nice and soft that looks. And then we're gonna add our hat to the top. How cute is that? Can you see that? All right. And then I'm just gonna get this ribbon curly ribbon, and I'm gonna curl some pieces. I'll just have them around, make it fun and festive. So yeah, I think that's looking really, really cute so far. All right, so like I said, I have some of these silver ornaments. We're just gonna drop those on, onto the uh, little decoration here and there. There's four, I wish there was five because I like odd numbers, but it's okay. Let me get this one. Put this one over here. I ah, can't see that one, just put it over there. All right, uh, so look at that. It looks cute, I'm liking it. Looking very fun and festive. Okay, so we got our centerpiece done. Now, of course, this is a very small, informal, decorated, all right? Um, well, you could go out and you can get balloons and you could do so much more. But for our little intimate uh, New Year's that we're having with our German dinner tonight, I think this is just appropriate. So now I'm gonna do some place settings. Okay, so I have these really pretty, uh, these are like placemats, they're silvery. I think these go really nicely. So I'm gonna put one probably here and one over here. Okay, so I have my plates down. These are my uh, just regular everyday white plates. And I'm using those instead of my really good china because of um, it's very informal. <laughs> and so I wanted white and the, the formal dishes that I have 
they have some pattern in it, so I just want to claim my napkins. It's uh, damask too. I hope I'm saying that right. I want to say it's damask. I don't know if it's damask or damask, but um, it matches, of course, the tablecloth. So I just folded it um, in this rectangular shape, and basically I like to just pinch it, and I have these really pretty um, napkin ring holders. They're silver too. So I think it goes really nicely. I just place it in there, give it a little twist, and then spread it out at the bottom. And that makes it look really pretty. You can place it on top of the plate for now because we're gonna be adding the forks and knives and all the silverware. So I'm gonna place that in here. And this one, give it a nice twist. go real easy nothing hard looking pretty let's continue here on our tablescape we see we have these beautiful german wine glasses and it's of a chimney sweep the chimney sweep is a sign of good luck in germany for the new year and also these little pigs a glückschwein they're called and a glückschwein that means um, like a lucky pig and pigs are also a sign of good luck in germany for the new year so I think those are really cute. I couldn't find the marzipan pigs, but these little uh, accents I thought were really cute for the table. And then of course we have our place setting and I think it looks really pretty. Okay, so welcome back. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, make our potato salad, or I should say in German, Kartoffelsalat. Now this is not exactly German potato salad. Um, my mom used to make pota German potato salad, she used to make American potato salad. So what I decided to do is combine and make it into one. So we're gonna be using a lot of the ingredients that uh, my mom used actually for the German potato salad and for the American potato salad. So what are you gonna need? You're going to need, well, this is for two, two or three people. So um, I'm using russet potatoes. You have to wash them, peel them. We're gonna be cutting these up in about fourths and then we're gonna put them in a pot and let them cook in a pot. You're also gonna need onions, probably about a fourth of a whole onion. You're gonna just dice that up small. You're gonna need some pickles. This is kosher dill sandwich stuffer pickles. You can use any type of pickle you want, um, but we use pickles in here. And then of course we have the German seasoned vinegar. And usually that's kind of like where my mom would stop as far as German potato salad goes. I think it was just basically the onions. Um, I think she put the pickles in there, definitely the vinegar. And that was really just salt and pepper, of course. Um, but when she made her uh, American potato salad, she added, um, she had mayonnaise in there. She had egg in there. I think that's when she put the pickle in there too, was the American potato salad and a little bit of olive oil. And so uh, we're gonna make it um, using all the ingredients. So <laughs> I'm using about three eggs. These are just large eggs and uh, let's get cooking. In this pot over here, I have my three eggs. We wanna boil our eggs and make sure that they're, um, they get hard and then we're gonna use uh, hard boiled eggs in our uh, potato salad. And then for the potatoes, I just cut them up into like fourths, placing them in a pot. So here's my potato, just kind of cut it like this, put it like that way, and then that way. And then I'll put those four pieces in the pot. Turn this on, medium to high heat. We want to make sure that that uh, boils. We have our eggs going. I'm getting this uh, pan ready for later on. And so when we come back, we're gonna start making our potato salad. Okay, so you can see my eggs are boiling right now. So I want to reduce the heat and I'm just gonna let that cook for about five minutes or so. And then they should be done. Okay, so while the eggs are finishing up cooking, I'm getting my pickle here my kosher pickle, pickles, and you just wanna dice those up small. I'm using three of those sandwich 
slices. So really it's probably about a half a cup or so of diced pickles. Same thing with your onions, all right? So now we got our onions, we have our pickles, got our mayo ready, got our vinegar ready, a little bit of olive oil, and I think we're good. Okay, so now we're going to continue making our uh, potato salad. So you wanna get yourself a bowl. You probably want to uh, make sure that you wait a while so they uh, cool down. As you can see, they're still steaming. So we still need to wait a little bit, but um, they look good. How you test them to make sure that they're done, you poke a fork through them, and if they go in and out very smoothly, then you know it is done. And so we're gonna wait just a little bit for our potatoes to cool down before we start assembling our potato salad. Okay, so I just transferred my potatoes into this uh, mixing bowl here. I'm gonna use this white bowl to serve it in because it's gonna go better with the table. And so um, I'm gonna mix my ingredients right now. I'm gonna get my egg and I'm just going to coarsely chop it up in my hands like this. This is my hard boiled egg. Remember we're using three. And just coarsely chop it up in your hand. And we're gonna add that, all right? I got two spoons here. You wanna always mix as we're doing it. This way it's nicely mixed as we go along. And then I'm gonna add my, this is my um, onions and my pickles. Remember the onions was approximately a fourth of a large white onion. And then this is approximately a half a cup almost of a uh, cut dill pickles. I'm gonna mix that together. Mm. Already getting hungry. Yum. I'm gonna sprinkle in a little bit of olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add my mayo. Now, for this amount, this is three russet potatoes. I'm probably gonna do about three heaping tablespoons. You get to actually uh, play around with it, see what works best for you, but usually, if you're using three potatoes, I use three tablespoons, heaping tablespoons of mayo. Make it nice and creamy. Okay, then I'm gonna add a little bit of that. This is German seasoned vinegar, Altmeister. I mentioned this on our show uh, a few times. This is um, basically, oh, it's a new bottle, no. <laughs> Gotta open this up, new bottle. Um, this is basically what I add a lot to my salads and uh, dishes, this Altmeister German vinegar. Now, where can you find this? You can get this, um, you can get this. I'm trying to open this up. <laughs> oh, here, yeah, pull this. <laughs> no, I haven't been drinking. Um, yeah. Hold on. You have to, uh, where can you get this? You can get this at, um, so you can buy this online. You can buy this off of Amazon. Uh, they sell it sometimes in certain grocery stores. Definitely the German, like Kubi's in Dallas will sell this. Um, I think you can maybe find this at, um, World, not the world market, maybe world market, but central market. Might want to try that. It just gives a really great taste. Mm. And I just do a sprinkle of that. So maybe almost a tablespoon of that. Almost good vinegar. And then you always want to taste it as you're going along. I'm gonna add a little salt, a little bit of pepper, ground pepper. Add a little bit of ground pepper. <laughs> Depends on how much salt and pepper you like. So it's a taste. Mm. 
And then I always sprinkle it with Hungarian paprika or paprika. Um, this is the Zeged brand. I've mentioned this brand so many times. This you can actually get at Central Market, uh, but they sell it um, online too. And I just kind of sprinkle the top. Now this is sweet paprika too. So sometimes they have a hot pop paprika or paprika, uh, but I always get the sweet one. Mix that a little bit, give it a little taste. Transfer it to this nice serving bowl here. Now you can, uh, or you do want to cool this, so put it in the refrigerator for a while, maybe up to an hour or so before you serve it. But you can eat it room temperature too. Mm. I love this potato salad. Mm. My favorite. And then we're just going to coat the top again with paprika, make it look pretty. And there you go German American potato salad. we're gonna make our Brussels sprouts. And basically what I do with the Brussels sprouts is I wash them. You have to wash your Brussels sprouts and make sure that you cut off the little stem part at the end and then take probably the first layer of leaves off. That's how I like to do it and then I rinse it again. And so I have this pot here with this little uh, strainer here and this is to put the Brussels sprouts and we're gonna uh, put the Brussels sprouts in here. It's really easy. And then we're going to put the flame on, probably a medium to low flame, and we're gonna let this cook. And when the Brussels sprouts get soft, that's how you know they're done. All right, so I'm gonna put this on, medium to low flame, and we'll also cover it, um, and then that'll make it cook a little bit faster. Are you ready for my super easy Brussels sprouts? This is so easy guys, so easy to make, and they're so delicious. So basically you're going to get a pan here. This is two, right there, two uh, tablespoons of butter. We're going to let that melt in the pan. We already cooked our uh, Brussels sprouts. How do you know they're done? When you can get a fork and you poke it right through and it's nice and soft. That's how you know they're done. So um, basically we're going to let this butter melt. The only thing you need for this is the butter, the Brussels sprouts, and salt and pepper, Parmesan cheese, and Italian breadcrumbs. And they are so yummy. They're so good. They are so, so good. So, um, and they're super easy to make, like I said. So we wanna first melt this butter. You can see our butter is melting. This is on a medium to high flame. We're gonna reduce that flame a little bit now. Medium to low. Just let that butter melt all the way. We're gonna get our Progresso Italian style breadcrumbs. I like to just coat the bottom like this. Then I add salt and pepper. This is freshly grounded pepper. A little bit of salt. And then we're gonna add our Brussels sprouts. I just kind of dump it in there like that. You wanna to toss them like that. Give it a good shake. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> and then we're gonna get the Italian breadcrumbs. This is Parmesan cheese. Sprinkle the top. It's probably about a fourth of a cup or so, depending how much cheese you like. It's really up to you. Warm it up and that is it. How easy was that? 
It is so good, it's so yummy. You're going to love it. Okay, so next we're going to make spetzel. And I say spetzel, it's really pronounced spetzle um, in German. And what spetzel is, it's basically an egg noodle. And they're super small, they're super yummy. And it's very, um, it's very um, traditional. Um, you'll find it in a lot of German homes. I know growing up, my mom used to make spetzel. And you can make spetzel using a spetzel maker like this. You can purchase this on Amazon. And basically you pour the dough in here and then you move this back and forth over the steaming, boiling water. Uh, that's what cooks up the spetzel for the noodles. Um, this is another one. This is a press. This is actually from Germany. This is German made. And um, you can see hopefully that the holes are a lot smaller. So you'll have different shapes of the spetzel. This one has just the big round holes. So depending on what you want, how you like it, basically you just lay that on top of the bowl, you press down and the dough pours out. So this one, like I said, was made in uh, Germany. You can actually purchase this. I purchased this on Amazon too. Um, very easy to use, nothing hard. Now, if you don't have any of these things and you don't want to buy any of these things, then you could just use a regular traditional cutting board and just lay the dough on and then just cut little pieces with a knife and then pour it into the uh, boiling water. But these make it so much easier. And this one wasn't that expensive, it was like 20 bucks. This one was more expensive because it was made in Germany, um, but I think they're worth it because it's so yummy. <laughs> All right, so let's get making our spätzle or spätzle. Okay, so we're gonna start to make our spätzle. So in this big bowl here, I put two cups of all-purpose flour. You're gonna be using two eggs. And what you wanna do with your eggs first is you want to beat them with the fork. And then you're also going to need approximately a third of a cup of whole milk. I'm also going to put in one tablespoon of beef broth and also, where's my, uh, here it is. I'm using a fourth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. So I'm gonna add my ground nutmeg first. Putting my dry ingredients in first. Fourth. I'm also going to add a little bit of salt. And then I'm gonna give that a little stir. I'm gonna sort of make a little well. I'm gonna be pouring the egg and the other liquid ingredients into the middle. So I'm gonna make a little well, just like that. You can see that. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add my egg. And then I'm gonna add my milk. And a little bit of that beef broth. This is just to give it some extra flavor. Now you really have to watch the consistency of the dough because it needs to be um, kind of can't be too loose and it can't be too dry <laughs> has to be somewhere in between so it can go through those uh, those little uh, presses the, the spetzel makers okay so you probably want to use um, you probably want to use about half a cup of milk at least and then make sure you're, that you're using some beef broth or if you can, you can also add water, okay? But you want the consistency to look something like this. See how it kind of is elastic, but it's dripped. It's almost like pancake batter, but a little bit thicker. Okay, you don't want it too thin and you don't want it too thick, like I said. So you really gotta play around with it. So let's just say this is two cups of flour, 
two eggs, a half cup of whole milk, and probably a little over a tablespoon of uh, beef broth, maybe a tablespoon and a half. And that should make a really nice consistency like this. Okay, so we're gonna let this sit for a little bit while our water is heating up. Remember, you need boiling water. And we're gonna use our Spätzle makers to create our German Spätzle. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so while we're waiting for our water to boil for Spätzle, I'm going to add some olive oil and a little bit of butter to this pan with onions. We're going to kind of cook up these onions, get them kind of brown, because this is gonna be a topping onto our little Spätzle casserole dish we're going to make, so stay tuned. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, salt to the water that's starting to boil a little bit, I can see. And we're gonna wait till it kind of bubbles some more, boils some more, and then we're going to start our Spätzle. Okay, so we're gonna start. Our water is boiling, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is gonna get this one. And I'm going to just show you using this one, and I'm gonna use the one from Germany. So as you can see, it's very elastic. I'm gonna add the dough. And then you want to quickly move it around. And it kind of drops. And then they come to the top. All right. So there's that. You do want to get a little strainer that looks like this. And notice that they're floating to the top. Once they all float to the top, that kind of lets you know that they are pretty much done. But we're gonna give it about 30 seconds or so before we start taking them out. You do wanna drain them. That's why this little uh, strainer here is really handy. And I think they all came to the top. Look at my spätzle. My spätzle look good. <laughs> all right, so let's see. Just gonna do this a little bit. Notice how they, they're kind of like all different sizes too, which is great. So that uh, $19 one, $20 one, Spätzle maker, I think did the trick. I think it worked really well. Let me take these out now. I'm gonna put this in my little uh, casserole dish over here. We're gonna use the German one now. This is the German one. This is the press. Wish I had more room. And then we're just going to press it down. Oh, look at all the little stitzlis it makes. <laughs> What was that? That was kind of fun. Let's do that one again. <laughs> How fun is that? See, cooking is fun. I don't know about you guys, but I have a great time cooking. Spitz, and you can kind of go like that. Use your front lengths. Drop it in there. where we have a variety of different sizes. See how they cook up? So as you can see how brown they're getting. And you want them this brown. Don't think of them as burnt or anything. So you definitely want them on the darker side. And this is going to be a layering to our little casserole dish that we're going to make. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to get some butter in a pan. And this is what my dad used to do. And he used to put the noodles in the pan. This is probably about two tablespoons of butter. And just melt that butter up nicely. And then we're going to add the 
noodles to it. And then we're gonna add the Gruyere cheese. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our butter is all melted. So we're gonna add our spitzle to the butter. Just added our spitzle to the butter here. Give it a nice mix. Mmm, yummy yum. Pepper. A little bit. We're adding approximately two thirds of a cup of Gruyere cheese. We're gonna be using a little bit more for topping later on for a little casserole dish. I'm just putting that Gruyere cheese in here. So I'm frying up my Spitzle here. Added my cheese to it. We're gonna add just a little bit more cheese. We're also gonna be adding some bacon to this and a little bit of cream. So this is usually how I like my bacon, about this dark. And we're going to chop that up into little pieces and add it to our spätzle. All right, so make sure that we get our bacon and put paper towel on it, get some of that oil off of it. And then we're gonna break it up into little pieces. Okay, so we're adding our little bacon bits to our noodles. Give that a nice stir. Blend that in, stir that in. And it depends on if you want more bacon, you can add a little bit more, but I think three slices for this amount is enough. This was the smoked bacon, uh, double cut. So it's pretty thick. I add a little salt and pepper. <clears throat> the cheese is already there. Now we're gonna add a little bit of the cream. I'm adding probably maybe a fourth of a cup of cream to this. I'm gonna turn up the, the flame a little bit. Give it a nice stir. And just a drop more of the cream. That looks good. Mmm, yum. And then basically, we're going to put it in this casserole dish. Spread it out a little bit. Yum. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the Gruyere cheese to it. And this little topping. And we're gonna put this under the broiler for about not even five minutes. Just to give it some nice color. We're also gonna add those onions. Mm. And so you do want your onions kind of on the darker side like that. Oh, it looks so good. Spread that out a little bit. What a yummy dish this is gonna be. Look at that. Now we're gonna put that under the broiler for about five minutes. And there you go. The German Spätzle, Spätzle with onion topped with uh, onions and, and the uh, Gruyere cheese. Mmm, so yummy. Cannot wait to eat this. And now we're going to make our German pork schnitzel. Okay, so you can see I have here uh, five pork cutlets. Um, what you wanna do when you see the fat, you wanna definitely take that fat off. So 
So with the sharp knife, make sure that you take off the fat first. You want really nice pork cutlets. Now these, these are actually aren't that bad. They don't have a lot of fat on it, but you still want to take off as much as you can. And another thing we're gonna be doing is we're going to pound it with a meat mallet. And we wanna make sure that they are thinner than what these are. And it's very important that your schnitzel is thin. You don't want thick schnitzel. You wanna get some handy wrap or cling wrap, place it on, get our meat mallet, see some extra fat pieces just take it off but you want it to be thin you want it to be be around I don't know about fourth of an inch maybe that looks good okay so we're back and the next thing we want to do is season our uh, pork schnitzels so I'm gonna use a little bit of salt I need to season both sides Make sure you see them both sides. And we're gonna do pepper. Same thing on both sides. Then I'm gonna add some onion powder. Now you can put, um, all these seasonings into the flour because we're gonna be adding flour, putting these in flour, egg, and breadcrumbs. But um, I kinda like doing it this way. I mean, that's how I've been doing it for years, but you can do it, adding all those spices to the flour. Now, this is Hungarian paprika. That's that Zeged brand that I always talk about. I'm adding some Hungarian paprika to that or paprika. I grew up saying paprika, so that's how I say it. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna add this to some flour, egg, and then panko breadcrumbs. Basically. Using two eggs, the last two eggs in my box here, and you wanna beat that up. Beat it with the fork. And then we're going to dip our pork um, schnitzel, pork cutlets into the, into the flour. And then we're gonna add it to the egg. And then we're going to add it into the breadcrumbs. It's gonna make it very crispy. So that's how we're gonna do it. We're just gonna do each one that way. So flour first, shake off any excess, dip it in the egg, make sure it gets all that egg on the on it. We add a little bit more. You just kind of judge as you go along how much breadcrumbs you need, however much it takes. Okay, so you just add your cutlets to the oil and let that cook. You wanna cook it for maybe about four minutes or so on each side. Four to five minutes should be good. So one of the questions you might have is how do you know when to flip it? So 
So basically you watch it and you can see from the sides when it gets a little bit brown, like a little bit golden brown, you take a look. And that looks pretty good, but I think I'm gonna leave it just a little bit more. And then you just flip it and then cook it again. So probably around three minutes for each side, three, four minutes. Okay, let's take a look at it now. That looks good. Good color. That looks like a great color. That one too. And it's so important to have tongs. Very important to have tongs. Now we're gonna let that cook for another uh, four minutes or so on that side. Okay, so it's been about three minutes. Let's take a look. Oh, that looks good. I'm liking the way that looks. Oh, look at that. Looks beautiful. Awesome, yep. I'm gonna leave it in for about one more minute. All right, so these are done. Oh my gosh, look at them, they look great. Oh my gosh, can you see that side now? See the color of that? Look how crispy it looks. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for Yvonne to taste these. That looks so yummy. I'm gonna put them on this plate right here. You can let it drain on a paper towel if you want. I'm just gonna put on this plate for right here because I have two more to cook. Mmm. Yummy. Schnitzel Spätzle. Ah, oh, so good. Don't those look fantastic? Oh my gosh, yummy German pork schnitzel. Yum, yum, yum. Hmm. Okay, so we have one last thing to make today for our delicious dinner. We are going to make our, uh, some people call it a hunter sauce. I call it mushrooms with a gravy. <laughs> but that's basically what it is. Mushrooms, uh, has mushrooms in it and it's kind of like a gravy and you can you eat it by itself or you can eat it, um, use it as a gravy on top of the schnitzel. So uh, I got some oil in the pan here. I'm adding some butter. We're going to cook up some onions. This is probably about same thing, about a fourth of a cup of a whole white onion. So I'll just chop that up small. And we're gonna add the onions first with a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, so we added our onions. I'm adding a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. I like pepper. And really it's to taste. And then a little bit of salt. You want to saute your onions and butter. Now I did use the pan. I kind of took the vegetable vegetable oil out most of it from the pan where the uh, the schnitzel was cooking. So it has a little bit of those breadcrumbs in there, but that's okay. I think it's going to add some flavor to it. Now you want to cook your onions uh, probably for around seven minutes or, or so, just so it's um, until it's translucent, pretty much. So it looks like our onions are pretty much done. They're nice and translucent. That's what you want. And now we're going to add our mushrooms. These are just portobello mushrooms. They have been washed, so make sure you wash your mushrooms. And I wanna mix all that together, the onions, the oils, the butter, all that into with the mushrooms. And then I'm going to cover it and let that cook for around five minutes or so before we add in our cream, okay? So I'm gonna put that on a little bit lower flame, let that cook for about five minutes. Okay, so let's check on our mushrooms. They're looking good. It's been about five, six minutes. 
Mmm, yum. All right. So now what I'd like to do at this point, I'd like to add just a little bit more pepper and a little bit more salt. And then I'm going to add probably about a fourth cup of cream. And I'm gonna add some sour cream. So this is, this is I guess, sort of like the, a Jaeger sauce. Now how much sour cream? Well, really depends on you, but I'm gonna use my whisk. Um, probably like a tablespoon, a good tablespoon. And you wanna mix that together. Yum. I'm gonna add a little bit of broth to it, beef broth. And a little bit of flour. I'm adding probably about a teaspoon of flour just to thicken it up a little bit. So it has the butter in here, it has the sour cream, regular cream, all very non fattening things. <laughs> But you know, it is only once in a while. So you can treat yourself. Mmm, yum. Put up the flame a little bit. You wanna make it to a very slight boil. And then we'll lower it. And then it should be done. I like to keep stirring it. Once I see it starts bubbling a little bit, then you want to lower it and then cook it for another minute or two and then it's done. So you can see it's bubbling a little bit. I'm going to lower the temp, let that cook for not even a minute or two, and then it's done. Yum. Mmm, so good. Okay. Well, here you go, our German New Year's feast. We have our Brussels sprouts that were in butter and Italian breadcrumbs uh, with some Parmesan cheese on it. Then we have our German schnitzel with Jaeger sauce. And then we have our Spätzle. Spätzle that was with Gruyere cheese and uh, onions that was broiled. Oh, so yummy. And we also have our German-American potato salad, which is super yummy. And we have some dessert there, some chocolate little cakes. What an awesome New Year's feast. I hope Yvonne loves it. Thank you so much for joining us on Happy Healthy Living with Yvonne Douglas today. Um, hopefully you learned something new, picked up a couple of new recipes. And I wanna wish everyone a very happy and healthy new year, a great 2022. Um, this is the end of our fifth season. So uh, we're gonna start season six, probably in about a month. So it's, I'm gonna prepare some awesome recipes for you guys. We're gonna focus back a little bit more on the cooking. And we're also going to uh, work on some decorating and home improvements this year too. So, or I should say for 2022. <laughs> have a great, great New Year's, everybody. And until next time, happy, healthy living. Bye-bye.